composition, highlights, and contrast. All of these were used to create this body of work, the company we keep. These same elements and principles are oftentimes the same things that we compose the relationships that we intermingle ourselves with throughout in life. If you stop to think about it, relationships are oftentimes the things that we carry throughout in our life. These are the things that give us meaning, that make our time worthwhile. When there is an important change in someone's life, the relationships are often the ones called to the stand and put to the test. Upon personal reflection, there has been a very abrupt change and adaptation to the relationships that I have created and encountered over the most recent year. In the past year, I have found myself separated from a marriage in a new tattoo studio full of amazing new artists and mentors, directly into a newfound relationship, not necessarily eye to eye with my family, and out of touch with a pivotal advisor to my academic career. Of all of these abrupt changes, those are the relationships that were put to the test. In a hopes to successfully demonstrate and evoke the same method of reflection that I achieved during the creation of each, I created this body of work. Now, to take you back and let you in on my method of thought, I have a backstory. At the beginning of the year, we took a tour of several museums in the Lincoln and Omaha area to get a better idea of what fine art is. Of several of the shows installed, most of them did not include any drawings, which was, of course, the medium I was comfortable in. This made it hard for me to find resources and people of note to look, to look up to within the discipline. This trip began to make me think that as a student, we try to live up to the narrative of fine art because it is so instilled in us as we go through our four years of education, where drawing is often just a precursor or a first step in the art making process. As we continue this journey as students, we strive to reach what is often condoned as such and to find our own work in gallery spaces. However, I did not want to abandon the medium I was so comfortable with just because I didn't see it in a gallery space. I did find one. <laughs> with this ideation in the back of my mind, I set to work. I was using my hands as references because of the easy access to them and I was putting up a new sheet of paper on my drywall almost daily. This experimentation and fast-paced environment led to new ways of application of charcoal, what charcoal was like versus the alternative of a Conti crayon, and how they could work together to produce something with an even higher contrast. It also led to whether or not I liked the paper I was using, how pressing harder would impact the impression on the paper, and so on. Now, I quickly realized how expensive art materials can be, and I quickly started to run out of my fine art paper from Hobby Lobby as I was drawing so feverishly. It's about the same time of trial and error that I ran out of my 50 to 60 pound weight sketchbook paper. It was at that point that my professor, Jerome Dubois, offered me to go to a local newspaper company to buy an end roll of newsprint for $5, and the rest is now history. This excess of newsprint allowed me to go large scale, covering ha more than half of my studio space just with paper. With all this excitement, I quickly came to realize what I wanted to do for my senior show. I wanted to illustrate how figurative hands can be and how they can elucidate an emotion just in their positioning. I wanted to keep it large scale and allow it to envelope my audience just as it has enveloped me within my own studio. Now, with, now moving on with senior thesis in mind, there is a downfall of newsprint paper in that it will inevitably yellow with age. Researching, I found that in order to cover a wall as big as our galleries in the JDAC, it would cost over $400 to achieve. Ooh, that's expensive. <laughs> On the other side, paper also lacks structural value that a stretcher of a painting may have. So I moved to masonite, often used as a construction material to regain structure, 
and, anti and its anti-aging properties, and I produced the first mock-up of what I wanted to illustrate, as shown. In the beginning stages of priming, I accidentally created a texture with a primer. When I applied the Conti Cran to its surface, that texture emerged. It reminded me of the surface of Seurat's drawings. Seurat, being a French post-impressionist artist who devised a painting technique known as pointillism, also created a body of work utilizing Conti Cran. The same method of texture as shown in the artist's mother is what I was accomplishing. Most may be familiar with Seurat's Sunday afternoon on the island of A La Rangea. What should be noted when looking at this painting is its fine textures that were obtained with its pointillism. Taking a close look at its texture as that is what unifies the space. Moving to the heavy reliance of line in my own work, I want to express form and illustrate the longing for connection and the embodiment that longing created and left behind. To successfully demonstrate this line work, I reference Hans Hartung, who was a German-French painter. He was known for his gestural, abstract style where line was the only method of expression. It wasn't until taking note of these gestural tapering lines that I decided I wanted to emulate it in my own works to show the intentionality and precision of what the, the marks of relationships can do. I use the design principle of em emphasis to create a focal point within my own drawings, following the likes of Ernest Pignon Ernest. Ernest Pignon Ernest, who applied emphasis to accentuate and draw attention to important parts of his artwork, showcased the human body in a direct address to the human condition and its follies. After pulling these influences and principles of art, I set in with my first installment, TC. TC is a nod to my mentorship that I recently entered over the past year. It is a nod to every mentor I had in the tattoo studio at Black Diamond. With the top hand reaching the bottom, it finds another hand to hold it. TC represents a new learning experience, illustrates asking questions and knowing that someone will be there to catch you and answer those questions, whether that be in personal life or professional life. Of the five, LS is in reference to an advisor that I've had the past four years of my academic career. If anything has given me more life crises in school, Lisa Smith would know that. The two hands illustrate being able to coexist next to each other and being involved with one another. The top hand, being careful, was placed within the other as if being guided. This piece stands as a commemoration of my academic career. The centerpiece of the five, AP, is a direct address to myself. The chronic overthinking and anxiety that has a firm grasp in my, in my life. The left hand, with its firm grip on the other, is to express this inner turmoil. The strangulation of happiness with my overthinking and how self-deprecating I am capable of being. It is also representative of the removal of myself of marriage. The fourth, SB, addresses the point of view that me and my family may have. They are in opposition, as are the hands, one reaching from the top and the other from the bottom. The intense shadows portrayed on the hand reaching from the bottom are there to showcase the opposing, opposing points of view. Now, there still comes comfort and support in my family. In showing this, the top hand is holding the other almost upright. This support is important as my mom is often the one I call in a time of crisis. The last of these, SD, is an effort to illustrate the intertwinement that we face in new relationships. The hands are intertwined with the fingers being at the center. Relationships with a lover and friend are never something that are black and white, which is why this piece lacks as much contrast as its peers. The shadows are predominantly gray, still creating value but lacking the high intensity that the other four contain. The importance of this piece is rooted in its soft palette as the ones who get to know us best see our softer sides. As a whole, 
I drove my composition of five drawings from Michelangelo's planning on his large-scale cathedrals. Often starting as a cartoon for the Vatican Palace ceiling, Archer's shirt shooting at a herm, <laughs> considers the magnitude of the space it is to fill. Cartoons are often submitted to, to secure a lucrative commission from the Roman Catholic Church. If they were awarded the commission, the cartoon would be transferred to the cathedral wall. Apprentices would then fill in the majority of the painting. Following, the master painter, Michelangelo in this case, would be the last to come in and paint what was seen as the most important parts of the painting, the face and hands. During the process of my own production, there was a premedita premeditative period on the relationship to be able to fully express the encounter that I had with that person and allow the viewer to do the same within their own lives. If successful, conjure a feeling within the audience from within their own relations. There is an importance in all of the hands, both shaded and unshaded. The shaded, accentuated hands are the relationships being highlighted and are each artwork is there entitled after the illustrated encounter. The texture is what gives those relationships body and allow for a physical representation to be displayed throughout the audience. The background and foreground are differentiated with unshaded hands that embody other, less important relationships and are modeled by the person they are representative of. Of all the line work hands laid in the back, none of them are my own. For the audience, as you view the company we keep, I implore you to think and test your own relationships. Apply the same emotions that e each piece may evoke in you and analyze what your relationships mean to you. Are you keeping them close enough to you? I would like to give a quick thank you to everyone that has contributed to my development as an artist and student. Lisa Smith, Jerome Dubas, Aaron Batham, Teresa, Mom, Sonny, Grace, Jade, Marco, and my studio mates. I am indebted to the personal relationships that I have had and I'm thankful for each. Thank you. yell at me, I don't care. <laughs> so, um, seeing how his emotion is a, is a big part of your creative process, how do you see uh, that affecting you as a professional artist, as a professional artist as you move into um, you know, a world of essentially graphic art and kind of pursuing a tattoo career? So, it's a cause for understanding. If I wouldn't have the relationships and perspectives of other people to place them into an alternative perspective for my understanding, sorry, these are big words. Um, different perspective, that's all it is. And without those, I don't think it would put my mind in a different space to produce different thoughts that help me move forward or create more art. Now, in the tattoo career, you obviously it's permanent. You have to consider what the other person wants. Does that, does that satisfy your question, Randy? <laughs> Two-part question. I noticed none of those hands were mine. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a choice or you going to hand model for me sometime? <laughs> <laughs> Rachel, what were you going to ask? Do you plan on using a lot more of your pointillism in your tattoo career? Um, I want to say that stippling is as close as it's going to get. <laughs> um, I mean, I, that's probably why I enjoy it to the point that I do. But I want to, and I'm gonna make the effort to do so. Clients? Yes. Just a matter of being able to find someone that's understanding enough to the point to have more so a piece of art rather than something that kind of means something to them. I don't mean to be just sense like. And sensitive, but yeah, fine. I'll make it a flashy, it'll be fine. <laughs> I have 
an understanding of the fact that people will always come forth with their own idea for tattooing, which is okay. So I'm more focused on the technicalities of it, making sure my lines are good, stippling, shading, proportions. So that is my mindset right now. I don't see myself leaving tattooing, so I will probably be there for a while. So I understand that it will be a process to get to the point where I want to be to include my more fine art into it. Yes. Um, yeah, <laughs> one more I have to say. Each piece is a lot bigger than me. It's overwhelming and then you have to take into consideration that not every relationship is necessarily sweet. Some of them can be sour. Um, and so those ones definitely took more time and a lot of stepping away from or putting them in storage for that exact reason but it was the meditative period on that relationship that was almost therapeutic to me and necessary to the artwork. So, yeah. So, I guess I should have thought about how many asses before I was about to call the sign, but anyway, um, I'll just keep it short. Color, question mark? What are your thoughts on color? Um, I tried out a blue pastel once. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> um, it highlights. For this body of work, I wasn't going to use um, color because I don't want to highlight one relationship as being more valuable than the other, which is also why the original had six and there was no center. Um, in the future, I would experiment with it because I did enjoy the contrast of the blue pastel, but. I didn't. I just didn't favor it for this body of work. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, Jennifer? I was going to ask the same exact thing. Color. <laughs> um. Will I use color in the future? Why didn't I use color? I would. Yeah. I don't know. I like the high intensity of black and white. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. All right. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk.